The M25 carries over 200,000 high-speed vehicles every day. This can make the motorway a very unpredictable place. It's 6 a.m. and at the M25 Northern Control Room in South Mims, Emily is starting an early shift. She's been in the job for eight years and has learned to be prepared for anything. Two of the most unpredictable elements of our job have got to be weather and animals. You never know how an animal job is going to go. I mean, you can predict the weather to a certain extent, but sometimes the heavens just open and it's far worse than we imagine. And today is one of those days. Do take care if you're going to be out on the road. I woke up this morning and I just heard the rain and I thought, oh no, it's going to be bad. I haven't even woken up properly yet. We've put in cones out, the cones are just floating away. It's absolute mayhem. In this kind of weather, the biggest danger to traffic is surface water, which can cause vehicles to aquaplane and spin out of control. Five, seven, go ahead. Incidents are coming in at a rate of one every two minutes. Even normally calm Ian is feeling the strain. Yeah, cup of that, uh, I'll do the necessary. Um, just do a shout, will you? Uh, six two, we have no MIMS units at all, and I need something done in the Hatfield Tunnel. Are you prepared no, to run? No, we have five four are going. Five four going to that? Yeah. Over an inch of rain has fallen in three hours, turning part of the network into a river. You can plan for most things, but for that amount of water, this is once a year we might get rain like that. Oh, it's frightening. You want free, Andy? Yeah, that's my belly. <laughs> in the yard, Andy and Keith are two of the 24 traffic officers around the M25 preparing to hit the road this morning. Some of the problems are some motorists don't always drive to the weather conditions. They still feel they can go as fast as they normally would do, um, change lanes quickly as they used to. We envisage a very busy day. OK, baby. Punch it, Chewy. Nearly 30% of all traffic collisions on the M25 happen in wet weather. In unpredictable conditions like this, today, anything could happen. The big issue with thunderstorms after a long dry period, which we've had, is that all the fluids that drip off cars naturally all come to the road surface. It's like driving on ice. People can crash because they just don't appreciate what they're, uh, what they're driving on. There have been 128 incidents reported so far this morning. X-ray 4207. Close to junction 16, Andy and Keith come across their first spin-out of the day. Hello, how are you? Did you hit anyone else or just the barrier? Um, I was driving to the gym this morning and it was raining, so I was actually driving slower than I would normally. Um, the car just completely just spun out of control and I just thought, that's it, and then it just went straight into the barrier. Andy and Keith can't help fix the smashed up BMW. Little armlets if you want to put your arm out. But even in terrible weather, Highways England customer service always comes with a smile. OK, keep you, baby. It's just mad how... Um... You know, in this weather, that people still go the speed that they go. When you get a lot of spray on the road, it can be quite scary. I can just about see the lorry in front. It is horrific. It's only 7.30, and over the last four hours, two weeks' worth of rain has fallen on the hard tarmac of the M25. We have a rather spectacular lake at Junction 21. Here echo 7272, 7 host number. At Junction 21, Highways England have been forced to shut the anti-clockwise carriageway. The water is running all the way around here, across the hard shoulder and uh, all the lanes. We've actually had to close the M25 at that location because it is such a big puddle. Nearly 3,000 people were seriously injured or killed in wet weather last year, so the Highways England team are not taking any chances. Okay. How are you? You all right? Good, yeah, mate. Thanks. At the scene, Andy, Keith and team manager Kevin are wading through the options. If you was to walk through it with a stick, yeah. just yeah. let us know how deep yeah, it gets. On. If you get wet I'll, ankles, I'll go good leadership, you lead from the front. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll stand and watch. We'll you, you crack on, Trickle. <laughs> Do the best you can. Purely for testing purposes to see yeah. how deep Use it is. Use that defence at your disciplinary. Yeah. Damn, I 
so wanted it to break down. <laughs> We'd have to tow him out. <laughs> no, I said I'd leave him. Yeah, yeah so would I. The problem with flooding is there's actually quite little we can do. We send one of our ISUs, but really all they do is poke the drain with a big stick. But for this job, a stick isn't going to be big enough. It's gully suck on this one. This one's going to be a gully suck rather than a pokey stick. So Highways England are going to have to call in what they call a gully sucker. So a gully sucker is, is like a motorway vacuum cleaner. It just comes along and... But as always with the M25, nothing quite goes to plan. With so much water everywhere today, we're struggling to get a gully sucker. And the one, the nearest one available, because it wasn't tied up when we asked for it, um, had to come from Essex. And it's just got caught in all the tail back because we had to close the motorway. It's now 9 a.m. and the anti-clockwise carriageway at Junction 21 has been shut for two hours. Tailbacks on the M25 stretch right round to Junction 25. That's almost a 14-mile stretch. This is extraordinary. I've never known a flood at this particular point on the motorway before. I've never known them have to close it here. It's just miserable today. It probably suits the M25 today. <laughs> I just have no words, to be honest. <laughs> Every lane in the tailbacks is packed with loaded lorries. The traffic hasn't moved now for three hours. That's an estimated cost of nearly two million pounds to the British economy. This is the worst I've ever seen it here. I've seen it flood here before, but never this bad that we've got to close it like this. And my new waterproof, water-resistant trousers are not very, so quite wet, but hey. It's 10.30, and after fighting its way through the miles of tailbacks, the gully sucker eventually arrives and can start pumping the water away. There's a lot. It's what, about 10 minutes? We'll see. We'll get down as quick as we can. <laughs> as driver Richard prepares his tanker... Let's crack on. Maintenance operative Mark has already found somewhere for the water to go. Well, obviously, that require many reasons why a drainage system might fail. We just think it's sheer weight of water today. At a cost of £2,000 a day to Highways England, the tanker can carry 30,000 litres of water, sucking up 1,000 every minute. But that's cold comfort for the people stuck in the tailbacks. It's massive. If someone said to me, what's my best route into work, I would say, take a duvet day emergency day, annual leave. Don't travel on the entry 5 unless you absolutely have to. Um, it's, been, it's been horrendous. But there's good news. The team is dumping a second tank load of water into the drain. Two lanes of the motorway are now clear of water. It's only just into there. That won't cause any issues at all. Yes, please, as soon as they're ready, uh, start letting the traffic through. The frustrated drivers have been stuck for over five hours and start to make a break for freedom the second the cones start being lifted, even though there are still traffic officers in the road. People are breaching the, the closure, which then will leave them abandoned in the middle of the motorway with no protection. So Keith and Andy rush to support their colleagues. You see the uh, traffic officers right down in the distance there. The reckless actions of a few drivers means the rest of the queue has to wait. We're now getting ready to release traffic. Are they happy that we're safe to release now, over? I appreciate how frustrated they are, but they nearly ran over my guys on the road and that's just not cricket. This time, they're taking no chances and Keith and Andy safely lead the queue past the flood site. The gully sucker slurped up four tanks full of water to clear 120,000 litres off the tarmac this morning. The motorway is at last back on the move, and now Emily's mood is also improving. I went paddleboarding last night. And it was beautiful. It was like 27 degrees, yeah, me and the dog on the paddleboard, just like, like this. I felt like a fat British Pocahontas. It was amazing. Just like... <laughs> the weather has improved. 
but there is no escape from the M25's other unpredictable problems. Welfare check on my ponies. Where are they? Just coming up from Heathrow. Every so often one of them gives birth. It's quite cute. Animals might look cute when they are on the right side of the barrier, but when they're on the motorway, they can cause mayhem. We get about 350 animal call-outs per year, um, and we really never know what's going to happen with them. But while Emily sees the problems, it's the team on the ground who have to get their hands dirty. In the past, I've dealt with quite a few swans. This thing dropped a dinner-sized plate of swan crap all over me. My ultimate worst job would be a collision between an horse box and a van carrying bees. <laughs> I'll be like, sorry lads, you're on your own, you best call the police. I just resigned. <laughs> yeah, I'll just resign on the spot. <laughs> the M25 lies on the edge of London's green belt, and with so much wildlife nearby, traffic officers need to know how to handle them. A bit early, don't like horses. Today, Kevin, Simon and Andy are heading to a stables for a crash course in creature control. We're all here to uh, learn the basics of uh, corralling horses. We often get them on the motorway, they cause absolute havoc. Uh, last one I had, we had the motorway closed down both ways for a, about an hour and a half, the M25, because this horse was running around. But the lads aren't exactly chomping at the bit to get going today. I don't like horses. They frighten me, they terrify me, so even that one in the background scaring me. I'm not overly keen. You know, big kicky, bitey things, you know. So, <laughs> so is that normal behaviour? Locals. <laughs> first to face his fears is Simon. We're volunteered stirrers. <laughs> Go first. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> now you've got to lift your head up, Gertie. The biggest challenge for the officers is rounding up roadside runaways. Now try and not drop this. On the floor. Well, I'm happy here at the moment. I think I'd um, rather sit in the car. That's it. Now, staying walking at her shoulder or her eye, that's it. Perfect. I thought you'd yeah. done very well. You approached that, yeah, though. You normally approach your first date, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I tend to leave it loose. Catching a yeah. horse is very much like <laughs> dating a lady. And with that in mind, Kevin tries a charm offensive. Hello, yes. We haven't met before, have we? Did you come here often? No? Kev, uh, chatting them up like that. It hasn't worked on the ladies when I've seen him out and about, but uh, he's definitely working on the horse, <laughs> male or female. I'm going to call him the South Mims Horse Whisperer from now on. Where are you off to today? Somewhere nice? Going to the seaside? Near Heathrow, Two veterans of the highways, Lindy and Jerry, are gearing up for another day patrolling the M25. I think their nickname to us girls aloud because she's loud. I'm not. And I'm a girl, oh, clearly. Yeah, obviously. You're all woman, obviously. Uh. <laughs> In the control room, they have over 1,000 CCTV cameras at their disposal. But even if animals or weather aren't involved in an incident, the M25 is always an unpredictable environment. Oh, there we are. Something happening there. Sierra Lima 62. Sierra Lima 62 from Hotel Alpha. You receive another. 62, there. Got a report of a two vehicle RTC. Are you available to attend, Ava? That's all received, thank you. Screen one for the RTC 1617. One and two closure, please. Jerry and Lindy believe they are en route to a multi vehicle road traffic collision near junction 16 of the M25. This area is the busiest section of motorway in Europe, and even the smallest incident causes instant tailbacks. Is there an ideal place to have an accident? I don't think so. But if there wasn't one, this would be it. <laughs> 25 minutes after the call, Lindy and Jerry arrive at the scene. It all appears to be on the hard shoulder, far at sea. But there is a motorcycle where there should be a car. This is two separate incidents, you aware? No. Hotel Alpha from Sierra Lima 62. It appears Lindy and Jerry are on a wild goose chase. They've just reported to us that there might be another incident further up, so we're just going to find out where we need to be now, really. 
leave the one on the hard shoulder and carry on to the original one, uh, live line. Yes, yes, good idea. We'll carry on. Well, what are the chances? I oh, know, right? Eventually arriving at the incident spotted in the control room, Lindy gets the lowdown from the fire crew at the scene. Yeah. What have we got? So at the moment, I mean, the car was in lane two. Yep. Um, but we've moved the car to get lane uh, three lanes running at the yep. moment. Okay? Um, we've got one gentleman, he's, the car sharply breaks in front of him, so he's gone into the middle barrier. The driver is a little shaken, but unharmed. It's all well on the hard shoulder? Well, this, the issue is, there's loads of debris across the road. Last year, there were nearly 4,000 reports of debris on the M25. So Lindy and Jerry have shut the motorway to sweep the carriageway clean. People see the debris, they break hard. Swerve to avoid it. We'll have another RTC, so clear it, make it safe again. If you're happy, we're going to open it up again. Going to open it up again. I'm going to have the traffic released. Gentlemen, please be aware. Having swept the road to safety, Lindy and Jerry release the motorists back on their journeys. Lindy's final task is to make sure the driver stays as safe as possible as he awaits recovery. OK, then, darling, what we're going to do is you're going to pop over here and you're going to stay over here. You're not going to wander because this is your place of safety. All right? Thank you very okay. much. You're very welcome. Take care. Thanks. All right. Back in the M25 Northern Control Room, Emily and Ian have come across another unexpected problem. Oh, Oh, yeah, we've actually just found it on camera. Screen one. There's a horse box broke down in lane two on the all-lane running session. Fortunately, trained horse charmer Simon is en route to Junction 26 with Gary. I must admit, I'm not a lover of horse boxes. It's unpredictable. You don't know how the horse is going to react. There are two highly strung animals in the back of the truck that need to be kept calm. But there's nothing more unpredictable than the behaviour of an M25 motorist in a hurry. Lane closures have been put in place, however, there's poor compliance at this time. People tend to ignore the red X's. You see up on the screen there, look at how many cars go down the inside of that. Bearing in mind, there's still someone inside that, there's horses inside that. Ooh. Sorry, I just watched the lorry come up behind. Luckily, it only takes Simon and Gary 15 minutes to reach the stranded horse box. There it is. Don't pass. Lovely job. Now Gary can hold the traffic back, while Simon works out a plan to get the truck and the distressed horses to safety. Right, what's up? Will it roll, though, if we tow it? We were just driving along, um, and out of nowhere, it cut out. So it's a little bit anxious. I mean, I think when you're just a person, it's OK, but when you have um, you have horses on board, it's a bit of a different story. We're trying to be on our way to a competition in Belgium for the World Breeding Championships, but obviously we're stuck on the side of the M25. We can't select any gears, so we're just going to try and drag him uh, into here or off at the next junction. Gary has been holding the three lanes of traffic back on his own, but moving two horses and a seven and a half ton trailer with their vehicle is a two-man job so he has to abandon his temporary roadblock and rely on his colleagues in control to keep a close watch on the traffic. Can you just keep a camera on it? Let us know if anyone drives through. The risk is while they're towing a vehicle with, without the vehicle blocking the way, if someone shoots up lane one and two, trying to cut through traffic, they're going to go into the back of them moving the vehicle. So that's what we're keeping an eye on. Traffic is growing at a mile every 10 minutes. Simon and Gary swiftly tow the horse box to safety with their vehicle, ready for recovery to take over. Simon, I'll get behind you and I'll yeah. release. All right, Gary, I'll yeah, release it, yeah? Oh, they've released traffic. This is when wacky races start and they all yeah. have another crash. Ever-changing environments and unexpected challenges make life as an M25 traffic officer a challenging but entertaining one. It's beyond description, really, for compared to any other motorway. It's like a bloody ant's nest, you know, to be honest with you. <laughs> but whether it's sunny and dry or raining cats and dogs, there's one thing everyone can rely on, the end of their shift. So now I'm going to go home, I'm going to be putting my feet up, I'm going to be having another cup of tea, and unfortunately I'm going to do it all again tomorrow. Next time, 
Lots of strange things happen on the motorway at night. Things go bump in the night. It's like the moon comes out and the crazies are like, let's go. The strippers. Can be frightening sometimes. You guys OK? You can't sleep on the hard shoulder. Everything happens, really. All of life is here.